Shut up and sit down. What's happening, guys? This is the Takeover Tuesday show. My name's Carlos Redlick, and I got David Allen on the other side. What's happening, man? Hey, how's it going, Carlos? Another episode of the Takeover Tuesday podcast, and I'm pleased to announce we have another copywriter with us today, Jody Ardito. I hope I'm pronouncing that uh, properly. Got it. Yeah, I was just having a conversation last night about my last name and how everybody wants to like, you know how people be like, oh, I'll just take your information down. Okay, what's your name? And I'll say Jody. And they get stuck there. And I'm like, what are you going to do with the last name? Like, can I just have the pen and I'll just write it for you? Anyway. <laughs> now, it says uh, on your website, writer, prankster, big idea girl. And that's what you have sort of uh, all over your social media. Maybe start with that and tell us what that means, because it seems you have this very specific brand. Yeah. So I, yeah, I've been kind of painting that all over because First of all, I like people to to know before they ever have that initial conversation with me that I tend to, uh, you know, I always try to make people laugh. I try to, I don't, I think I get it from my mom. I actually didn't, I didn't really have a very good relationship with her for like the last two decades. <laughs> and then, you know, we just, I mean, we'd talk. It wasn't like we just didn't ever see each other. It was just like a very rare occurrence. And then she got sick and I've been I've been basically her caregiver for like the last six uh, five or six months now, and um, she's, you know, she is one of the funniest people I have ever met in my life. Like I had no idea she was this funny when I was a kid, and now I see where I got it. Like even when she was in the hospital, you know, I remember the day she was released. Like she she and I stuffed the bed full of pillows to make it look like there was a dead body in there. And then we waited behind the door, not even joking, like we waited behind the door so all like people would come in to like see her that final time, all the nurse staff and everybody. And and they would come in and we got it on video too, a lot of this. But they would come in and they'd like, what the hell? Like what happened to her? <laughs> That's excellent. That's so you're crazy. a prankster from way back. Yeah. You know, some people in our family were like, we can't believe you did that. Like, that was so bad. <laughs> and we're like, you can go F yourself because we're, you know what? She is really sick and, you know, who cares? Life is too short not to laugh about stuff. So screw you. Anyway, yeah. so yes, I am a copywriter. I am a prankster. I am a jokester. And I'm definitely the big idea girl. So the big idea girl comes in like two different forms. It comes in my writing style. Um, and, but but I'm also really, truly an idea generator. I, <laughs> I found that I was coming up with literally like hundreds of ideas, hundreds of new ideas, like every month. I'd, and I'd get so distracted by them. You know, I'd, I'd have an idea for this great app. And then I'd be like, that's what I'm going to focus on. I'm going to, I'm going to get this app going. And then, you know, I'd have an idea for a book and then I'd be like, okay, hundred percent. I'm going to focus on this. I'm going to get this book written. And then I found that I wasn't getting shit done, you know, like none, I was getting zero shit done, but yet I had all these amazing ideas. And so what I did, I want to say it was around the time my mom got sick. So this would be like uh, August, September. I decided, I think maybe her being sick, like kind of helped me with this, but I decided that I was only going to focus on things that truly made me happy, like really fed my soul. And so I went out and I remember I was at the beach and I got this journal and I was like, I call it the big idea journal. I wrote big idea journal on the front of it. Now, every time I have an idea, I put it in there and it, it feels really good because I know that any time that I finish a project I'm working on, I can go to that journal and decide which one is the best thing for me to work on next. And I'm not allowed to do anything with my big ideas until I finish what I'm working on next. So oh, yes, I'm awesome. Yeah, that's like, that's discipline right there. Yeah, so I am a copywriter. I was doing a lot of client work. I was mentored by Ben Settle. I don't know if you guys know that. You may know it. Um, but I, I was mentored by him. He, and in fact, he did such a good job, like teaching me the way, if you want to call it the way, 
that I sort of like lost myself with his training. You know, like I, I have this blog called Single Mama's Dramas and I used to write to it and I, I just went back to it recently and I was like, you know what? I haven't written to this in almost a year. What is going on here? I love this blog. I loved writing to it. It was like, it was my outlet. And and I read some of the entries and I was like, this is not me. Like, who have I become? And I, you know, I had people on my copywriting mailing list. They would message me every now and then and be like, does Ben write your emails? And that's how I knew. And it kind of like disheartened me a little bit. I was like, I think I, I think I failed the ultimate lesson that he was trying to teach, which is that in copywriting, especially this is important with clients. So you you guys know this, like when you're working with clients, you have to like write the shit in their voice, you know, like you can't turn in a piece of copy in your voice. You have to do it in their voice. It has to come across as though they're selling that, whatever it is. And so what I failed to learn was that when Ben was teaching me all of this stuff, that he was teaching me the elements of writing. He wasn't teaching me to write in his voice, but I, I missed that. And so, um, so I've been kind of going this whole like evolution of discover, rediscovering my own voice. And a lot of that comes in my humor because I, you know, I'm very, I'm a very upbeat, um, outgoing, whatever fill in the blank person. Um, <laughs> anyway, so I'm trying to like recapture that and get that through in my writing style. So one, okay. So one of the things that I'm like, one of the biggest things I'm working on right now because I'm trying to do two things simultaneously, even though I said I'm not allowed to do two things. <laughs> You're breaking there your was, rules already. <laughs> it, I know, it's really bad. So what happened was, is I was working on something, but then I kind of dropped the ball on myself. I decided to plan this huge event, and it, it's in Portland, Oregon. And I decided to, I was already working on my own product launch. I have been working on my own product launch. I had no idea it could take this long, and it shouldn't take this long. But I'm I'm making some mistakes and I'm trying to learn from it. But in the meantime, I decided in December I'm going to host an event and it's going to be better than any other fucking internet marketing event out there. <laughs> and That's I got good. I got super excited about it, you guys. Like I put money down on like Hummer limos. I put money down on. I signed a, a huge contract with this hotel. Had no idea what I was doing. I just went for it. I just like went for gold on this on this idea. And what happened was I got so busy planning and like and and making plans and you know booking and making it like the best thing ever that I forgot to like start promoting it early enough. <laughs> so I've been trying to like get on that and just make that my 100% focus. So right, well, tell us I hope it's okay. Them. No, no, yeah. it's perfectly okay. Tell us more, what's it called and uh, and when when's it happening? Yeah, thanks for I, – I hope that's okay that I bring it up on this. No, um, no, absolutely. It's kind of like what my current obsession is. So even though I am working on my own product launch, this is the big deal right now. So it's called Biz and Brews. Um, no S is in there, okay? No, no Biz and B-R-E-W-S. It's Biz and Brews dot com, okay? <laughs> okay? So that's the website. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's in Portland, Oregon. So I sent an email to my list the other day, and it was a pretty badass email. And so I'm going to sum it up the way I summed it up in this email. Sometimes I work with copywriters because I try not to take, I maybe take like a couple client jobs every, like every six months now. I really try not to do that at all. But it was really nice. I took on um, a couple projects, you know, just to generate some fast cash and help out a few friends that really wanted me to write their copy. So, um, so anyway, what happened was, is I was, I was working with this copywriter on one of his projects and he said, you know, Jody, I know you give me this advice and, you know, I, I understand what you're saying, but I feel like you had it easier than I do. Like you had a leg up that no other copywriter has because you got to work with Ben Settle. And it kind of like, it kind of irked me, you know, like not in a bad way. Like he was just being honest and I get that. I, I appreciate candidness, by the way. He wasn't trying to get under my skin and yet it bothered me because I've heard other people say this, especially female copywriters. They'll be like, well, Jody, you know, you get a lot of like PR because 
you're with Ben Settle or because you were trained by Ben. We don't have that. And women are invisible in this industry. And I say, you know what? Here's my retort for that. Nobody else can ever say that to me ever again. You are not allowed to ever say that. And here's why. Because Ben never helped me create relationships with the 10 people that I went to personally and asked them to be a speaker at my event in Portland, Oregon. Nobody even really knows where Oregon is. I swear to God, I've had <laughs> people, I have had people be like, is that really a state? <laughs> Welcome I mean, to America. Like, Crazy. <laughs> they know where freaking Kansas is, but not Oregon. Are you joking me? It's like the Texas of the West Coast. This is like, this is kind of a cool ass place to be actually. It sounds so, good. Yeah. So anyway, I went to 10 people that I know. And yes, Ben is one of them. I actually have a secondary plan for Biz and Brews too. So I actually have like this secret panel coming in. And that's like four or five more people that I've networked with and that I know that I've asked to come to Oregon. And guess what? Because of my relationships with these people, they all said yes. And now what this gives people is an opportunity, copywriters, business owners, entrepreneurs, anybody that has, has like even like remotely a clue about business online and wants to take it to the next level, but feels like maybe they are, they don't, they don't have the chances that other people have had. You don't get to say that anymore because I'm going to give everybody an equal opportunity to come and meet everybody that I know that has helped me. Like these people, I had Diane Hawkman call me like recently and she, she helped me. Like she didn't, I didn't even know that there was this huge problem. And she came to me and she's like, Hey Jody, you're going to get screwed if you don't like get yourself out of this certain situation. And so I, I had no idea that I was in this bad situation. I, I was totally blinded and she had my back. And that happens a lot with me. I have really amazing relationships and everybody that comes to Biz and Brews gets to form those relationships too, because here's what I've done. I have decided to make this like a super intimate event. So it's basically like one speaker to like every five people. Okay. So that means that there's going to be so much one-on-one -on -one time and so much like undivided attention at this thing. It's a three day event. If people want to come in a day early, um, the, the event, actually the training event starts on March 18th and it ends on the 19th end of day. I have a giant massive brew tour on the 18th planned with like everything's hosted here. Once you get into Oregon, there's a shuttle that will take, bring you out to me. They will bring you to me at the hotel on the waterfront. And from there on, you are taken care of everything. Your meals are provided. Your red carpet brew tour is provided. Your Hummer, you know, tour through Portland, Oregon and the Hummer limo that's provided. There's a VIP party bus after the catered dinner after the brew tour, they will bring you back to the hotel. I mean, I even have like a cocktail party planned for the last day. So anyway, it's going to be pretty spectacular. Um, ben Settle, Ryan Stuman. I don't, do you guys know Ryan? Oh, yeah, we've had Ryan on the show. Awesome. Dude, I am so excited to finally get to meet him. Dan Meredith is coming in to speak. Ray Higdon. Yeah, it's, it, the lineup is insane. Um, Ray when, Higdon. When, when, when you say insane, you mean like the people are actually insane is what you actually mean. In a good way, though. No, hashtag Dan Meredith. No, I love, <laughs> I love that guy. You know, can I just say he was on, um, he was on a Google Hangout like webinar thing with me and a couple others, and I think it was Shane that poked some fun at him, like, "Oh, dude, do you even know how to read books? You know, or whatever." And I always feel bad for the guy. Like Dan is actually so smart and I know he like you know people make jokes about him but I've had conversations with him I'm like that dude knows what he's doing I know he's not like you know he doesn't claim to be like an expert guru in, in XYZ but when it comes to social media that guy has his shit together like he does shit I would never like have the balls to do so anyway I'm pretty excited that he's coming to my event and then we have uh, Ray Higdon Diane Hawkman Shane Hunter Louise Congdon who's like you know some podcast guru actually David I think I hooked you up with him for your podcast yeah, in too fact, uh, we're recording later today after this so he'll be oh man show. that's so 
exciting. Look after you. Cool. Yeah, I have Amy Elizabeth Kamala Chambers who does um, digital uh, marketing. She does. She helps people basically do like digital product launches, even if they don't even have a digital product. She was telling me the other day that she had a teacher who teaches like ballet classes. I think it is. Like she, maybe it's not ballet. It could be like some other dance class. Um, but anyway, she was like a dance teacher at some like brick and mortar dance business and now she has like a digital product she had never it wasn't yeah she like went to Kamala and now she's like making money she wakes up the next day and bam there's like money in her bank account it's pretty cool anyway and then you know I think I said oh yeah oh my gosh you guys <laughs> I don't know if you've ever heard of her but she is like the I call her the female Ben Settle um but her name is Vicki Irvin she is I okay of everybody coming to the event I feel like she is the one that I'm going to be like that idiot like I will almost be like shaking to be able to hang out with her you'll be a, That's fan, how, a fan girl is what you're saying I am the biggest fan girl of Vicki Irvin so she has this uh she has photos on her Facebook because she has her own uh, makeup cosmetic line now so she's she's into internet marketing she does like trainings kind of like Ben's email player. I know she does like a lot of like training for women on how to get better with online business, like with, you know, like marketing their business online. But she also has her own cosmetic line. And here's the deal I've been telling everybody that she's a supermodel. So like people think that there's a supermodel coming to Biz and Bruce. <laughs> yeah. That's false guys she to me in my eyes like she is incredible you can go check her out on facebook she's a hottie first of all <laughs> plus she's like one of the smartest women i've ever met and she does these live have you guys been doing this at all there's like this thing called facebook live i haven't i've seen a few people do it but I, we haven't done it yet no i have anyways Apparently, yeah, no, I have done it. I'd love to do it. I just don't have the iPhone. I have an Android. I don't think it's available yet for Android people. It's not. I, I heard it's only available on iPhone. Um, but right now, yeah, as Ben would say, gay little iPhones, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so yeah, she does uh, these Facebook Live things. And I remember once, like, I don't, I don't even know how I get sucked into these. I love Facebook Live because it's kind of like Periscope, except it's through Facebook. So you don't have to have a, this, this special app to be able to do it. Anyway, she got on there and talked about humility and how, you know, people be like, hashtag stay humble. You know, like, have you guys ever had people do that? Like where you have, a, you're celebrating a win and somebody will be like, stay humble. And it's almost like a yeah, slap. Yeah, the people face. that don't like, accomplish it. Yeah, they are. They're they're fucking. I, I I will unfriend somebody and put them on my blocked list. Um, I will do that if they do shit like this because here's what happens. And she brought this to light, and I love her for it. And I thought it was so incredible that somebody finally talked about it. Um, what what she says is like people say stay humble as a way to like bring you back down to their level. And it, it reminded me, and I, I hate to say this, but as an entrepreneur, we experience this all the time and not just in business, but in our own family. Like we have to, we have to protect ourselves from our own family members who don't fucking know what we are even doing out here. They're like, <laughs> I went to my grandparents' house in little town of Myrtle Creek. There's like 300 people that live there. And they're like, what are you doing now, Jody? And and I told them, I said, I'm doing copywriting, Grandma. And she goes, what does that mean? And I told her, like, I write ads for people. Like, if they have, like, a face cream or something, you know, that's what I do. I, I help them sell it in, like, you know, magazines or on the Internet. And she goes, and she pulls that. She literally pulled out a magazine and started turning the pages. And she goes, did you write this one? <laughs> oh, well, that's yeah. too awesome. So I That's told her cool. yes. So she. <laughs> so you're now a spokesperson for Nivea. Yeah. She... Yeah. Exactly. What's that like? That big acne thing, like getting rid of acne. Oh yeah, the Guthy Ranker thing. Uh... Anyway, she thinks I sell that stuff, but it's okay. It's all good. Anyway, so back to Biz and Bruce. Vicki Irvin. She is. Uh, she's coming out and she's going to be speaking. She's going to be teaching people how to build. Um, lifetime customers through email. 
So kind of like what Ben's doing. But anyway, so it's going to be a cool event. We have a lot of fun, exciting things lined up. So um, here's what I want to do, uh, if that's okay. Um, right now, the tickets are thirteen seventy five a spot. I have a couple different ways people can do this. If they go to bizandbrews.com, they can get a seat. There's only 50 spots at this event, so they can get it for $13.75, one-time payment, or they can divide it up. So they can do one payment of $6.95, or they can do they can do one payment, and then two weeks later, it'll bill their card again for the other $6.95. Um, but I want to do something special for people listening to this message. You brought me on here to, um, you know, to introduce myself, and I want to uh, give everybody... 50% off if they just just to your people though okay that's so, huge everybody yeah. knows that shit so there there are a few seats left and I want to like get rid of these quickly so I can get back to working on my product launch stuff so that's why I'm like I'm just going to do it today I haven't I know that there are probably going to be some people mad at me that's why I'm only offering this to you guys um, because there are a lot of people who've already bought tickets and if they, you know, I, I may do something like extra special for them at the event, like give them like a big bonus package at no charge or whatever. But for your guys as people, anybody that wants to buy a ticket today, I'll give it to you for half off. But here's the thing. They got to, they got to let me know first. Cause I haven't, I don't have like a special coupon code. So, um, I'll give you my information, you know, I'll like, Give, send you guys the link. You guys can put the link on there and they can just get a hold of me and I'll, you know, I'll like send them to a special page where they can get that discount. Okay. Awesome. Thanks cool. a lot, Jody. I, take, take note, everybody. If you uh, want to attend this fantastic event, it sounds like it's going to be badass. And I will speak to this a little bit because I first uh, encountered uh, Ben Settle uh, years ago. I don't even know how many years ago now. Uh, Cause I was into Matt Fury. And so when I read about Matt Fury, I started looking around the internet for Matt Fury stuff, and then eventually found Ben because he was a huge Matt Fury, you know, pusher, if you will. <laughs> and as a result, uh, I got to know Ben's, you know, his ideas and so forth. And, uh, you know, Ryan has been on this show. Some of these other speakers sound amazing. So if anyone out there listening to the Takeover Tuesday podcast wants this, uh, attend this event, and she's giving you 50% off, I'd say jump on it. And we'll put the link uh, when we release the show, which will be tomorrow. Yeah, that's Sweet. pretty. That's awesome. You know, hey, I've always wanted. To, I always, I'm always so curious about this, and you've probably been asked this already so many times. But how did you actually get into copywriting? It's so weird that nobody really knows what it is that I've found, and it's almost like a little like fucking culted community or some shit. So how did you actually get introduced to copy, and then how did you uh, meet Ben? Because that's probably a cool lesson in itself. Yeah, you guys listen to this. This is a hilarious story, actually. I had no idea. So I've been writing since I was 12, which actually kind of works against me in copywriting a little bit because I remember my BFF and I, Rebecca, we were like, we're still friends on Facebook, and I sent her a copy of my first check. I'm like, look, Becca, I got paid finally. It's like our dream come true. <laughs> uh, but we, when we were like 12, we're like, we're going to be poets, and we're going to write and get paid for it. And we're going to sit in our little rocking chairs and write poems and get paid. <laughs> so that didn't pan out. So I went to work at the Dairy Queen when I was 18. I can still make the perfect curly Q top of an ice cream cone. But yeah, I had I had no idea that copywriting existed until I met Ben. But apparently I was already doing it. I just didn't know the word. You know what I mean? Like I had no clue that I was actually copywriting for my own business. So I had this, uh, I had a couple businesses actually. Um, one was a, it was a commercial and residential eco-friendly cleaning company, which eco-friendly is like really hard to find in Southern Oregon. It's like redneck territory here. Nobody gives a shit. Like we, they don't even have like emission testing on our vehicles. It's just like, whatever. If it has like a black cloud of smoke coming out the back of it, we don't care. <laughs> long as it That's dies. even better. Yeah. America. <laughs> you don't got a, a hood for your car it's okay just put some duct tape around it you know it's like it's That's crazy fine. here so to start like an eco-friendly cleaning company here in my town of little old roseburg was kind of a risky thing to do but i really wanted to stand out and i wanted i i knew i was only going to target like probably like maybe 12 percent of my community 
but I ran with it. And what I found was I was doing everything as a business owner. I was like building the accounts. I was doing all the marketing. I was going to all these entrepreneur meetups. I was going to meet with business owners. I was, I was really big in like the winery kind of side of the cleaning because they can't even use like, you know, they can't use vinegar. They can't use bleach. I mean, you have to be really careful with what you're using in certain facilities, especially those. So anyway, I, I got a lot of attention very quickly. Um, I was, I was making amazing money, but what I was doing is I was working like around the clock. I'm not even joking. I still remember the day when I worked all night and then I went to work and did all of my day jobs. And then I went to work and worked all my night jobs again. And I had to drive home with my elbows because my hands hurt so badly. And I even had a cleaning crew of 14 people at the time. Like I was, I was truly doing it all. And turnover was really high. And I was like, I hate my life. This sucks. Every time I hired somebody, I'd be like, oh, there's light at the end of the tunnel, you know, kind of thing. But then it would always, somebody else would quit and I'd have to get out in the trenches again. All I wanted to do was just do the marketing. And like my greatest joy came when I started a newsletter to my customer list or to people who would jump on my website. And it was so fun. I loved it. I was truly having fun. I was making all kinds of mistakes and had no idea until I met Ben. So I actually met Ben sort of through the entrepreneur meetup, sort of because he hired me to go and clean his house because Ben doesn't ever do the whole cleaning thing. So, <laughs> and, and that he sounds has, like me. I've been desperately trying to find somewhere to fucking clean and do all my dishes because I am just horrible. I just actually, not to sidetrack you, basically no, have thrown away pretty much everything. And my girlfriend and I have just gotten paper plates and fucking, uh, and like solo cuffs, and we're just fucking <laughs> thugging it because we don't want to do dishes anymore. Like, fuck that don't shit. Don't you hate it though? Like sometimes when you accidentally buy because you're like trying to save money and you buy the wrong kind of pit plastic cups and like you squeeze it too hard and your Pepsi flies out. Oh I man, mean I double cup it all. I double cup it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, double, that's double wrap, strange, I double cup. Fuck that. Tips we should share on this show. <laughs> That's awesome. I love I it. That, I think that's the first time I heard of you, Jody, though, because I've been getting Ben's emails for years. And uh, he referenced you, I'm sure, in a few of those when he had a cleaning lady coming in. And then uh, as you were sort of, you know, eventually becoming his uh, copywriting apprentice, I never yeah. I never heard your name, but I was like, there's this person, you know, uh, who may even be fake, who knows. And then it sort of came to the fruition. Oh, yeah, this is a real person. And she's like, uh, now she's doing her own shit. So, yeah, it's cool. So... I'm, I may actually decide to get a little bit personal on this call and, and tell you guys about some stuff that nobody's ever heard. Oh, wow. So, but we'll, just, we'll decide, I'll decide that as I, <laughs> as I progress through this story, we'll see, we'll just let it happen organically. So, <laughs> so what happened is he hired me and my crew to go out and clean his house and I, I mean, I'm telling you guys, I was like, kind of, he was a nice guy. Like that's what people always think he's like this a-hole, you know, and, and he is, he is, but he's a really nice a-hole. <laughs> so he would always come out and like open the door and like, you know, corral his dog and whatever. And he was really nice, but then he'd vanish and he'd go into his office and close the door and we wouldn't see him like he was always out of our way we we could bust ass and get that thing done in like two hours this whole house would look brand new again and so we'd we'd clean his house but i always wondered like what what was up you know like what's he doing in there like how can how can he afford this he i mean he didn't have like a mansion or anything but it was a nice house and he didn't have like a a you know corvette or whatever those other fancy cars are but he had a nice car and I was like what does he do that like even I, I just have like a freaking minivan at the time I had a minivan and I was jealous you know I was like what does this guy do that he gets to stay home all day and I have to come out and bust my ass and clean toilets and you know whatever so I, I still remember I had to like send him an email or something to like change the cleaning day for next time on him and I saw his little in his reply I saw his link www.bensettle.com and so I I decided to go see what he does I mean some people call it stalking <laughs> I don't. investigation it's investigation I call it inquiry okay <laughs> your inquiry took on a whole new life it sounds like so this is what happened 
Okay, here's where it gets good. So, and this is where I'm going to tell you a little bit more information than I've ever told anybody. So, I was kind of starting to like this other guy. And and Ben had just started dating this other girl. And but I didn't really know it because I everything I learned through Ben was like through his email list or through his pod cuz he had just launched like a podcast. And he had hired me and during all of this, like going on, so I went to his website, did the inquiry, joined his email list. The first email I got was stop watching porn. Right. And, and I didn't know it was a list email, you guys. I just thought my customer is emailing me at 3 a.m. That's hilarious. To stop watching porn. And I was like a little like... <laughs> Kind of red faced. I was like, oh my gosh, why is he sending me this email? So I read it. How does it. he know? How does he know? How does he know? Yeah. Exactly. I was like, this guy is so weirder than I thought. He's, anyway, he's telepathic. <laughs> I'm like looking behind me. <laughs> anyway, so he, <laughs> anyway, so I was like, I read the email and I was, I didn't realize I was being pitched until I got all the way to the end. And I was seriously mind blown. I was like, that is the very first time in my entire life ever, ever, ever that somebody has sold me via email ever. I'd never had that happen. You know, you get emails from like Macy's or Target or whatever, you know, it's a sale, but you, I just had never gotten an email from somebody that I had like, you know, signed up, whatever. And, and like got an email from them and bought some, like, it was just crazy to me. I was like, this guy is amazing. So that was my first experience being like, I, I can't, like, I got to figure out what this guy is up to because he's obviously the wisest, smartest guy in the world. <laughs> so I'm sure he agrees. there we go. So that's where the story, <laughs> that's where my story sort of takes a little personal turn. So I just started kind of liking this guy. And he had just started kind of like seeing this girl and he talks about it on his first podcast, how he goes and visits her. And I remember like being really comfortable with Ben because, you know, we both had people we were starting to get to know. So he and I kind of became friends. Like he started opening the office door and talking to me and it was kind of cool. Like we were getting to know each other a little bit. Then I launched another business because I hated myself even more. Um, I, I started, I started, that's how you dealt with hate. You started businesses. I was like, I hate my own guts right now. Let's do another business. So I started what I call, it was a, it was called meal maids and I would deliver these like gourmet meals to people. It was like, there is no way, like I've, I've gone to some, there's a new restaurant in my town and I went and ate there the other day and I was so excited because it has a really good reputation. I know all the people that own it. But then I made the mistake of ordering food, you know, and <laughs> whenever you go out to eat, it's like for me, I'm a huge foodie. So I was like, I, I went to this restaurant and it was just like the crappiest food. It was like, I felt like it had come right out of a Schwann's wrapper that they it had like the fake grill marks on it. Like they painted the grill marks on the chicken. It was all perfect and everything. You know, when you get on your barbecue, you guys are guys. You guys probably grill, right? Okay. Do, your chicken doesn't look perfect, right? It's all like burnt and shit. Very little yeah, that's idea what it's looks supposed perfect. to look. <laughs> yeah, that's how it's supposed to look. Damn straight. So this restaurant, like, they don't do that. My meals were like real gourmet meals. I should have been charging a hell of a lot more money. Anyway, so Ben hired me to, like, bring him his meals, too. Of course he did. <laughs> I heard about that on the email list. Okay, awesome. So here's what's really, really kind of sad. Like looking back, I feel kind of guilty about this. Like the guy that I liked, he had his own business too as a winemaker. But I didn't realize I was doing it. I was really doing it to help him. Like I was doing it to help us both at the same time. But I would make him listen to Ben's podcast. <laughs> oh, Every awesome. Sunday, he would come over and we would sit and listen to Ben's podcast together. <laughs> That's considering a date considering right where the story That's goes, that this is going to be really, this is going to sound really twisted when people listen to this. That's going to be so funny. He was coming over thinking they were going to Netflix and chill, and then they bent, settle, and chill. That was like definitely different. Oh my God. 
it was so, like looking back i'm like who the fuck? like who does this like so anyway um <laughs> So anyway, you know, when push came to shove I, a shove, I was like, I don't really even like this guy because I really like this other guy. And so I, I as the minute I realized how much I like, I remember it was like a this epiphany. It hit me one day. This guy like wanted to take things to the next level. He wanted to like make it official that we were dating. And I remember I was like, we need to talk. And that's when I ended it. I was like, we need to talk. It's over. Like, I don't want to see, you know, whatever. It was, it was so bad. You guys, I'd never done that. I'd always been like the nice girl who like let people down easily or like tried to, we can stay friends. You know, I was, I was always that kind of girl, but not this time. I, this was very different. It was like cutthroat, you know, it was like. It ain't working. <laughs> yeah, it, was, it was all those Ben Settle podcasts. Yeah, maybe that's what it is. I didn't even attribute it to that. <laughs> you turned me into an a hole. <laughs> anyway, that's it. So, <laughs> Put the blame on him. <laughs> so I told uh, I told Ben like I think it was like within the next few days I had to clean his house again or deliver some meals, and I was like, "Hey, Ben, guess what I did? I traded in the winemaker for the hot for for a new red truck. I had bought like this." really old Ford F-150. It was like, it was the coolest badass truck ever. I think it was like a 1980 or 81. Anyway, it was super old. Um, and I was going to like rebuild it and like repaint it and stuff and take it to graffiti night. Anyway. So I told him, I was like, I traded in the winemaker for a truck and he, you could just see it on his face. Like you could tell he was like, why'd you do that? Cause he really liked the guy. Anyway. So he ended up we had all had plans like his the girl he was seeing and the guy I was seeing and Ben and I were all supposed to go wine tasting that like the next weekend well it ended up being just Ben and I <laughs> and that's kind of where I like let him know that I liked him basically and you know so you know it was like way months down the road that he decided to to take me on as an apprentice so anyway that that's all the like personal divulgences here but Hell yeah there you go just a little funny note here i actually tried to become a copywriter without telling him he, he i don't think he knows this either i tried to become a copywriter without telling him i tried to like figure out how to get clients without him knowing like I tried to do it my own way, and I still remember I got paid twenty three dollars to write, uh, like a it was a little like ad for a lawyer down in Fresno, California. So for the record, a lot of people think my first copywriting gig was a five thousand dollar gig. Well, that was the first one through Ben. He didn't know that I got paid like just over twenty bucks to do an ad. So. <laughs> You know, I'm telling you right now, don't do it my way. Do it his way. He's a lot smarter at this than I was. <laughs> that was the uh, shameless horror phase, as John. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was I was showing him the ad. I didn't tell him like how much I was getting paid for it. I was just like playing it cool, like, hey, can you just like I have to turn this in to this client I got, and he had no idea, you know, that it was like some shitty job. Anyway, so he looked it over and he's like, you know, this isn't bad, but, you know, here's how you can fix it real quickly. And then like, you know, whatever. And then he was looking at my emails for my meal maids business. And, he, and those actually had potential. He's like, I'm going to help you with this. In fact, I'm going to take you on as my apprentice. I've never done this. And this is what I'm going to do. And we're you're going to become the world's best copywriter. And I was like all excited, you know, a new venture. Oh uh, yeah, <laughs> I I still look back on those days with fondness. <laughs> <laughs> so a lot of people uh, that listen to our podcast are copywriters, and we've sort of come across this. I know Carlos gets asked this a lot, and so do I. When people are trying to first, you know, they seem to be bad at selling themselves. They're good at selling everyone else's products and services, and crafting sales letters and email messages. But when it comes to actually selling themselves and getting the clients, there seems to be a disconnect. So maybe uh, in your experience, uh, you know, with learning from Ben, whatever, if you can give us a few short sort of takeaways, how you got your first clients and how you how you charge them appropriately, because it sounds like that's one of the things he instilled into you. Yeah. So let me tell you, first of all, 
Ben set me up for failure right out of the gates. He, I'm, I still wonder what, like, what the hell, why did he do this? But it was actually really good for me. So what he did, people think like Ben was sitting here as like this marionette, like getting clients and just like feeding them over to me. But no, he was not that nice. And let me tell you what he did. I remember, I don't know how long you've been on his list, David, but do you remember the first time he sent out an email saying he had an apprentice and like, oh, yeah. he was, okay, cool. So you probably remember when he said like, if anybody is looking for somebody like for, you know, copywriting, I will be working with her. If you want to hire her, here's how yep. you get in touch. Okay. So yep. here's what happened. He got, he got a list of people that responded. And I think it was like, I, I think it was like four or five people responded that first email. And so, or maybe he vetted like the idiots out cause he'll do that too. And I, I may not have known it, but he handed me four names and it was, I think three of them actually booked a call with me on the same day. So I had three calls back to back cause that's how stupid I was. I was like, Oh, I'll have one at nine and then I'll do one at nine thirty, and then one at 10. <laughs> and so I had never, gotten on a call to talk about copywriting in my life. I had, I had no idea what I was going to talk about. All I knew is that I was a kick-ass salesperson. I'd worked for the newspaper for a while and I was really awesome at selling advertising. I took a really unique way of selling advertising with my clients that made me one of the like best salespeople there. So I knew I was a good salesperson. So I get on these calls. Well, first one comes in. And the guy starts asking me questions. And the biggest mistake I made, <clears throat> I didn't realize until after the call. So the spotlight's on me, it's my turn to talk, and I am just sitting there, mistake after mistake after mistake, telling these people why they should hire me. Here's what I'm gonna do, here's what I, I, I will just like work my ass off for you, you know, whatever. Here's what I'll do for you. I can do this and that. I had no idea. I didn't even know like copy lingo at the time. They were using words like autoresponders and I really had very little clue what that even meant. I think the first time somebody said like, I'm just broadcasting, I, that was way over my head. Right. So I, I was literally stumbling over my words, spotlight on me, talking about me, talking about my experiences. And then the second call was ready to come in and I think I had like 15 minutes because the call was done in like 15 or 20 minutes. That guy never got a hold of me again. Right. He knew her. I like, I sent him running for the hills. <laughs> even with Ben, even with Ben, he was like, hell no. <laughs> He's like, that, Ben can't fix this. See you later. He's like, I have a new tagline for you. It's not writer, prankster, big idea, girl. It's like, don't talk, be pretty. <laughs> yeah, so, <laughs> so I went in, I went, I left the office and I was like, Ben, and he goes, I heard it all. Here's what you did wrong. Read this book, this couple, two pages of Gary Benzavanga before you get on the next call. And I read that the two pages in like Gary Ben Savanga's uh, copywriting, like uh, his uh, retirement DVDs. He has like a big book of tran the transcriptions. And I read these pages and it just was, oh my gosh, that second call was like night and day different. So I think what people are doing is they're making the mistake I made where we think we have to prove ourselves. And we do. I, I'm not saying we don't. We do need to prove ourselves, but that comes later in the conversation. The initial conversation you have with a client doesn't need to be anything about you. It shouldn't be about you. You need to tuck that shit away. Nobody gives a shit about you. Like this person is coming to you for help. So you need to be like a, you need to be, you know what people need to be? They need to be an investigator. They need to do inquiry, okay? Nobody, I, I still get copywriters contacting me, you know, because I have a little copy group and I have copywriters that I pass work on to and whatever. And so um, they'll contact me and be like, I just like, I keep having all these opportunities, but I'm not booking any sales. And so I get on a call, I'm like, buy my ebook, you get a one hour consultation with me and we'll evaluate what you're doing right and what you're doing wrong. And it's always the same thing. 
Like they're talking about how they're going to rebuild. Okay, let me look at your funnel here. Okay, so then I look at their funnel and then I tell them what they're doing wrong. And then I tell them what I'm going to do to fix it. And then I tell them like, I give them some ideas on like how I'm going to run with this and like some ideas on headline variations. And I'm like, dude, you just gave them all the information they need to go do all that shit themselves. So why do they need to buy the milk when they're going to get the cow for free? Right. You know, it's, it's exactly you're what basically. Yeah. Exactly what Ben teaches in his thing about the uh, yeah selling, so, but, you know, go ninety percent, but leave the ten percent sort of hazy because yeah. uh, they have to get you to do it. Yeah, exactly. So like, you don't need to go giving away your soul. You can you can like tell them, ask questions. Like that's what I use that first. I call it an intake call. Get on an intake call. It shouldn't take more than fifteen minutes. And I love the like 10 to 15 minute intake call because it forces you to ask as many questions as possible, leave yourself out, kill yourself for 15 minutes and just ask them questions. Let them do all the talking. Ask them about their traffic. What are they doing? Are they are they wanting to go for cold traffic? Are they wanting to go for warm traffic? What is what is their biggest is it a little bit of both? Is it you know what's the you know ask the questions like people aren't doing this like what, how you know what? How many emails are, are they doing? Email follow up? Are the take a look? What are the, what are they doing? And find out everything you can. And I'm not talking about market research here either. Like people think, oh, I need to learn about their market in 15 minutes. No, you don't. That's later down the road. This is all about the sale, and people are trying to squeeze it all into that first call. They're trying to get. They're trying to do like this five step process in one call. And no, the the copywriters that are really good at this aren't doing that. I mean, look at Ben. Like, he'll, it's great when people message him. Like, are you available for copywriting services? First of all, if you've been reading his emails, no, he doesn't do copywriting. Why are people still asking him this? But it's <laughs> it's still amusing. Like his yeah. response, no. You know, it's like the good copywriters are not responding with these giant lengthy emails about how great they are. And like, you're trying too hard, people like treat, treat it like a, a dating profile or treat it like, you know, like it's going to be a bad date. Just like people are like building out this fantasy land in their head and they're like chasing this dream. Like, stop doing that. Pretend, assume you're not going to get the sale. And then ask them all the questions and make the decision for yourself. What if it turns out you don't even want to write their fucking copy? How many times have you guys gotten a job and it pays really well and then you realize it's like the worst copy gig ever? Yeah, I'm raising my yeah. hand right now. <laughs> I've had that too. You know, it's funny. I usually tell people straight up in the beginning of the call. Um, so I don't have it like a script or anything, but somehow I'll throw it in. I'll be like, hey, I really appreciate you hopping on the call with me. And I just really want to, because by this time, they already kind of know my like flat rates and shit like that. And I'll just be like, you know, I just wanted to make it real clear. I'm not here to sell you or pitch you. I kind of just want to see if uh, we're a good fit. Because if not, then no worries. We probably won't work together, and I'll let you know up front. But I'll probably know three or four other copywriters that might be a good fit. So that's kind of the purpose of this call. Is that cool with you? And they'll be like, oh, shit. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Be sweet, man. So tell me a little bit about what it is you're trying to accomplish. Just give me like a little spiel in your own words. And the, you know what I mean? But that way, it's it's kind of like a little filter. Kind of like what you're saying. Like, I don't even know if I want to fucking work with you. But I may know three or four other people, so keep on talking to me. You know what I mean? Because <laughs> maybe we will. I don't know. I learned a long time ago that I can't really get into something that I'm not at least interested in. Yeah. So if they got some product that I think is horseshit or uh, or just doesn't resonate with me in some way, like they're just on some, on some weird fucking vibe or something, uh, new agey stuff, for instance, or something, you know, then right. I just, I can't do it. You know, I, I'll just, up front, I'll be like, this is not a fit. And, um, you know, I can refer people to whoever. But uh, I'm very picky too. I, I, copywriting is sort of something I do. Uh, as of right now, sort of more on the side, uh, because I found that I I could I wanted to be picky about it. I wanted to do things that I really wanted to do and not and not have to do it, uh, you know, for money that I absolutely needed. You know. Yeah. So I'm in my experience, it's been like I've noticed this thing. Like if I take one copy gig from a client, I'll get that person will go and like tell all their twins about it. You know, yeah. like for example, like if it's a coach in a certain 
niche, let's call it a life coach. And then you'll get like three other life coaches calling you, you know, and it's like, I didn't even want to write that copy because it's like a scary thing when you're, you've already taken the money, you've already agreed to write the copy. You're already like kind of knee deep in this project and, and you didn't really, you should never have taken it to begin with. And then, and, and then you're in this copy and you, you, they think it's amazing. And you're going like, I don't even know what you're selling here. Like, (laughs) Yeah, I fucking hate this. <laughs> like, like this is even like I don't even know what the bullets are just pure horseshit. Like I feel sick over it. And so what I've done, and and this is what copywriters need to do too. I, I know what it's like to get that big fee, and but it's kind of like being in real estate. You get that big check, but you you already like because your gigs come so few and far between. It's like you you kind of need to live on that for a few months. And so you like, you know, you count on that money, but you need to not do that as a copywriter. That's why it's so important to do your own thing. Like write an ebook, like write a few ebooks, right? Put some shit up on Amazon, do, do a product launch, write for your own stuff because then you won't need that money. And here's how you have power over those customers is when you realize that their product is horseshit, you can give that money back and Free, free yourself of the chains that bind you, because oh, that's a good one. That's a writer downer. Yeah, because you, it sucks. There's nothing worse than writing copy for losers out there that are. I mean, and you're a part of that. Like you're putting it out there that this, you know. I and I don't endorse that anymore. I just give them their money back now, and I say sayonara. Look, it's done. We're we're over our relation. Kind of like the wine guy. Our relationship has reached the point where we're gonna have to part ways. <laughs> I, I, no, that, that, that's very important though i think uh like for myself hey, you, want, I, hey I, you guys can i just i got i gotta make a joke here he joined he joined my wine club <laughs> that's funny <laughs> that's awesome anyway well, I, I learned that because i got into copywriting like several years ago sort of small i got into email stuff uh because of matt fury and i started doing some people's emails and so forth but i figured out pretty quickly that i couldn't work for just anybody because i'm the same way i couldn't work for anybody i don't need i mean some people are like oh i was like the greatest employee i worked so hard and all that i fucking i didn't i was a terrible employee because i wasn't sold on it was just like a check to me you know so anytime i felt like i had to go work at a job it was like all right how soon can i fucking replace this shit when i was younger so i don't know i kind of the same way man i there's no way i could be a fucking uh employee again even anytime i feel like uh and it hasn't happened really yet it used to happen when i used to sell websites back in the day but anytime i feel like i'm becoming like like our contract relationship with a client is becoming an employee type relationship that shit gets straightened out in a call real quick because it's just you can't work that way if that's not how you you know what you do you know you feel too con- I like to feel free. I have to have like some sort of freedom or fuck you money. Like the freedom that Jody's talking about is absolutely true. You've got to have uh, something going on that's giving you consistent income. And however you you know make that happen is good because you definitely got to have the fuck you money, the money to be able to say, you know what, fuck this. I can't handle this bullshit anymore. This is ridiculous. I'm not doing this. I'm walking hey. away. Just fucking money. Yep. Yeah. So what's the biggest check you ever gave back to a client? Biggest check I ever gave back to a client yeah. um, it was probably when I was selling websites. I've given like a fifteen thousand uh, dollar check back, but that was for like a website, a whole marketing thing. But this was like years ago. I haven't given a check back for a copy yet, I don't think. And if it was, it was like eight months ago. I don't even remember it. But yeah, I think the biggest check I've had to give back is something like that for I mean, website. It was four, four grand for me. Four grand. Mine was ten grand. It yeah. was like. They had hired me on this ten thousand dollar a month retainer, actually. So if you think about it, that's actually a lot more than that. Like right, I remember, right. they got me on this call. It was like a collaboration call with their team, and I remember they made some comment, and it was so disrespectful. It's like, well, you're the copywriter. You should know, blah blah blah. And it was because I asked them a question and I was like, you know what, actually come to think of it, I'm not your copywriter anymore. And I like blocked, like I took them off of all the shared drives that we, I gave, like gave them their money back. They were done. We were done. 
It was yeah. just, it was like the best feeling ever. I was like, anybody who disrespects me and like does a call, you know, just <laughs> like treats me like shit in front of people, they're over. Like, I'm not going to put up with that. Yeah, so. that's great. I think I that's had some, a big I had trait. Somebody, I had somebody more recently uh, where I just would not get involved any further. Uh, where they, where I sent them a few emails. I wrote their email autoresponder, you know, seven or eight emails it was. And then uh, they came back and were like, Oh, I didn't like this part of the grammar and this, this is repetitive here. And, you know, always, I was just like, fuck it. <laughs> I was just like, no, we're good. Find somebody else. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's ben and I are working on this project together, actually, right at the moment. And I was freaking out because I really like the project and I really like the client. And I was like, dude, if you f, f this up, like, do not do this when you're drinking. Because he was <laughs> drinking and he like tested the client. He like tested the client. He was just, he, this was like yeah. the craziest thing I've ever seen. I've never seen somebody send something to a client just to feel them out and see if they would, you know, see if they're like going to be a good boy. You know, and right, do what he right. says. Do what Ben That's says. So funny. That's so funny. So the guy fired back and said something like, "You know, my my market doesn't really like the use of this word." And Ben sent him a message back, and he's like, "You know, we'll we'll do two variations, and you'll test both both of them and see what your market likes." And before the guy responded back, Ben's like, if he tells me he's not going to test both of them, like, I swear to God, we're giving him his money back and he's going to hit the road. And I was like, do not fuck this up. Like, I can't, like, I like this guy. I like the project. Like, this is the first time I've loved a project this much. Like, do not do this. Do not do this. And then the guy responded now. <laughs> he responded like, cool, dude, I'm happy to test both. And I was like, oh, thank Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. That's so funny. Well, I learned that, I learned that very uh, matter of fact, because I don't know, I don't think Jody knows this, but some of the people who listen to this podcast, uh, I street perform. Oh, so wow. I, so I do magic uh, on the street. And it teaches you so much about uh, this kind of stuff that directly relates to business and copywriting and stuff. Because when I don't like the, like any other situation where I used to do private gigs only and stuff where I would, you know, come to people's houses or do their events, they would pay you ahead of time, often pay you very well. And then you'd have to put up with their shit. And so you couldn't say what you, if someone insulted you or, you, could, you know, there was this like barrier of you, like, oh, I can't really get into it with this person because I've been paid and it's their event. And, uh, but on the street, none of that matters because they stopped to watch you on their own volition and it's the street. So you can tell people, I mean, I've never told anyone on the street really to fuck off, but I mean, you can kill the show. Like I've killed hundreds of shows where I just like, you aren't the people, you know, goodbye, you know, and you've just, uh, the show's over. But it's, it teaches you, you know, how to like who's the right people and who's not. And I think the same thing applies to copywriting. It's like, do you want to work for these right people where they get it? Like what Ben said, if this guy comes back and says he's not going to test, like he's not the people, you know? Yeah. Uh, and you find that with emailing. When you're emailing people, like I just advised a client of mine and his emailing. He was sending two emails a day to his list for the entire month of January. And he hadn't sent more than probably an email every other month, you know, for for years. And some of the people started unsubscribing and stuff, which you'll get, of course. So I said, I kept asking him every time I said, oh, I got another unsubscriber. I said, well, what, how much has that person bought from you? You know, and he would look because he could go into his Shopify thing or whatever and look. Uh, he's never bought anything from me. Exactly. You know, stuff like that, where it's like you're trying to find who, who your responsive people are. I'm still in that phase. I know, I know Ben's, you know, I should have learned to like not feel any pain on that, but I still am like, what? That was a really good email. What? Why did they unsubscribe on that one and not the boring one that I sent two days ago? Like, you know, you take it. I'm hey, sorry. Quick, I'm a girl. I, I still take it a little personally. <laughs> we had a That's conversation yesterday. We had a conversation yesterday where a friend of his, called up and said like oh i've talked to some other people and they don't like all those like just too many emails or something like that and then he asked him to send an email to promote promote an event to his so oh, you're wow. so you're like which is it then really you know <laughs> that's crazy what you gonna say carlos well i, I kind of we've uh we've been talking so much and i kind of wanted to throw out another uh 
another little link, I guess, of yours so people can follow you. So do you have any stuff where you give out like copy advice or anything like that? Yeah. Or where can people yeah. follow you? Oh, gosh. So give them the one. I think this would be the most valuable for them. And since we started out the conversation about how horribly complicated my name is, I'm going to spell it out. <laughs> Um, and then we can put it in, you know, if you guys are going to write bullets for this or whatever, we can put it in there too. But um, it's jodyardito.com. I actually give away a free script on how to ask clients for money because I noticed with my group of copywriters, that's where everybody kind of gets hung up is the asking for money part. It's really hard for people to throw out a high dollar amount. So I teach people how to do that, how to raise your prices and ask for high fees. And um, so anyway, they can get that for free, totally free at jodyardito.com, J-O-D-I, not Y, J-O-D-I-A-R-D, like David, I-T-O.com, jodyardito.com. So you get a free... Um, free upsell. I know I, sh I should uh, probably hook up an email autoresponder to that, but I just haven't been. That's on my in my big idea journal, so you're probably not going to get many emails on that list, but um, I do try to keep people up to date on what's going on with Biz and Brews, too. So if you join that list, you'll get the free guide to how to ask for how to ask for big fees and money from clients, and then I'll also keep you posted on the Biz and Brews event, too. But remember, awesome. you only get the 50% off through David and Carlos. Awesome. Oh. Thank yeah, you yeah, so yeah. much. Yeah, that was great. That's a great offer. Thanks a lot, Jody. Yeah, thanks, guys, for having me on today. It was super fun. I, I had no idea we'd go way over time. So my apologies <laughs> on that. But you know what? It was a really fun call. And I don't normally do interviews that are this fun. So it was awesome. <laughs> yeah, awesome. Well, that's, that's great. Excellent. And thank you for all the, the knowledge and the stuff that people – will help people. Anyone wants to go to that event, I highly recommend it. I will, I'm sad that I'm not attending because I got a prior commitment. Otherwise I would be there. Uh, but thanks a lot for the uh, discount. Anyone who wants to go and, uh, Carlos, you have any closing, uh, remarks? Keep kicking ass, Jody. Thanks. You guys <laughs> too. I'll see you guys on, in Facebook land. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good, Jody. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Adios. Adios. I always like to thank, uh, of course, at the end of the show, Ben Sound at bensound.com for the intro and outro music, which we may be changing. I haven't decided yet. Uh, if anyone has any comments on that, they can they can send that along. I'm going to recommend some uh, royalty-free music. Otherwise, uh, we'll see everyone next week where we have uh, Lewis Congdon on, the Podcaster Supreme. <laughs>